Hi guys, my name is Elaine and I am making this little diary, video footage, garden calendar update vlog just for me and my home to figure out how it's going and the progress to see over time. I hope you enjoy seeing how I make sourdough this week and also of course some puppy footage of our two dogs and some little snippets of the garden. <laughs> So first step, of course, is making sure you have a healthy sourdough, and there's all kinds of recipes on Pinterest and through different blogs, so just pick one and go with it. They're all pretty similar, just different ratios. The next morning, we have a very bubbly starter. All right, so here we are adding in the sourdough and mixing it in the water and then adding in our salt, and soon we are about to pour in our flour. Here we are just mixing everything to make sure all of the dough gets wet, but we will let it sit to absorb everything, so this is not super crucial, it's just to get everything mixed together. And I'm actually going to be making two loaves, so here we are onto the second one and you can start with the starter here into some distilled or filtered water mixing again and repeating the process and this time around I'm actually combining just regular all-purpose flour with a little bit of wheat flour to kind of make a wheat sourdough you never want to do all wheat because it is not cooked the same and it will not rise properly So we are about to cover the dough like we did the first time and now we are going to let it sit for 30 minutes to absorb and then start our um, kneading and pull in on the bread here and we're just going to do our folds and I repeat this process for I think four times. This is what creates the bubbles and all of that good stuff in your bread. So you repeat this about three or four times and you wait 30 minutes in between each stretch and fold to let the dough continue to ferment and rise and then this is where you let it sit on your counter and double for about six to eight hours after all the stretches and folds. Alright, so now we are at our first break in the sourdough process where we have folded multiple times and now we can let it sit on our countertop at just normal temperature for six to eight hours. You just want it to visibly like double, fill up the rest of the bowl. Um, so yeah, now we just wait. That's what we love to see. All right, <laughs> not that, but it's gotten a little overgrown from going out of town. Definitely need some weed eating and some lawn care. Just a quick hello from our boy Coda. He is very vocal and mad that I left him alone in the backyard. So off to say hi to him and inside to see Sister Nala Girl. Okay, so it's been like six to eight hours and the dough has risen. So now it is time to prep our baskets to get our dough shaped and ready to have our bulk fermentation in the fridge. So I'm just laying out some flour and as you can see the dough has visibly risen, doubled, and I am just going to pour it out on the counter and get every last little piece. I'm going to be making the two loaves and one of them, I am going to add some rosemary and garlic. So anytime you're going to add a flavor, you do it during this stage, right before you start shaping the dough and pulling it taut and then putting it in the basket as you can see here. Now it's time to cover and put this one in the fridge and then on to the next. I am about to add in the flavor at this stage right before I begin to shape the dough and use some like surface tension 
to make sure that we are getting the dough nice and taut and ready for the basket. There's a lot you can do here. You could put in cheddar cheese. You could put in cinnamon. <laughs> you could put in jalapeno. Just think of any bread like a cinnamon raisin, like any kind of bread flavor that you would want to test out now as a stage to add in that stuff before you finally wrap it up and start to shape the dough. I am pushing and pulling it against the countertop here to get it all shaped and round. You can see some air bubbles, so that's always exciting for me. And then I'm just putting it in the second basket and off to cover and put in the fridge. Hello, this is just a break in the sourdough process with my sunflowers that are now taller than me. Um, this is a spot in the sourdough where it's a long fermentation in the fridge and you basically can forget about it at this point and just put it in the fridge for 24 hours, multiple days, whatever you want. It's just a slow fermentation process before baking so you can score it easier and forget about it. Nala is not normally allowed in here, but she will do anything to go into the garden. Oh, okay. This is adorable, but... She needs to get out here before she tramples a bed. All right, I just, I think it's maybe because we've had a mole. I haven't seen this mole, but I see it. So they're just freaking out. And as you can see, major zoomies after work, typical day with the pups. And soon we're about to see Coda explore. Back to what we all came here for. It is time to get the oven prepped. We are preheating the Dutch oven. We are putting our flour on. We are about to score. You can really go crazy and do all kinds of designs, but for the sake of being nervous and filming myself, we are going with a very subtle wheat pattern here. And it's always my favorite because it just looks very simple and pretty as the boat, uh, as the bread expands. And then I actually did this loaf another day later, so it stayed in the fridge for two days. And now it is time to take out your preheated Dutch oven and stick the first loaf in, and you are going to bake it for 20 minutes with the lid on and then in a moment you'll see that we take the lid off for the additional last 20 minutes and that is what we would call the oven spring like the bread spring of the bread you really want that steam that's piling up underneath that lid look at how beautiful and now we're going in for the last minute and look what we get. Wow. Never get tired of that. I'm trying to find a good spot to stand and talk to y'all, but for now, just placing you on my fence post. Um, but thank you for watching and I hope you got some inspo on how to make sourdough bread. Maybe some garden layout, show you what you can do in a backyard garden and yeah just let me know if you'd like to see more Thank you again for watching this little bake with me video with some extra life things involved. Now I'm just having fun around my garden and harvesting something today. It is remarkable how much you get each day out of a little 
backyard garden like this one so don't ever think that it's not worth it or it won't be enough because this feeds us and some of our family as we're able to give away extra. Thanks. Bye.